Hey, welcome to episode 351 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Very special episode featuring Canadian comedian living in New York, Ryan Long. Really good friend of mine, amazing comic. This is a super funny episode, uh, but first... To celebrate more than 350 episodes of this podcast, we've been doing this show for so long and we've never missed a single episode, not even once. So to celebrate, we're releasing merch. Check this out. All right, we've got a t-shirt, we've got an enamel pin. It's really cool, loosebeers.com, you can get it. There's a link in the description. It's a pre-order for the next couple of weeks. We'll be shipping them out soon. Once the pre-order closes, they're gone for good. All right, so this is your chance to get them. I'm really proud of this merch. It's one of the best designs we've ever made. We haven't done merch for ages. I'd love for you to wear it. This is the first ever Spearhead Sunday's merch drop to celebrate us not missing a single episode in 350 one episode. Enjoy the show. Hey, Ryan Long, welcome to the podcast. Woo! United, me and Lou. Finally, it's been so long. Uh, so yesterday, Australia was kicking my ass. Yeah. I got, uh, I did uh, my bank, so I, I, my phone just stopped getting internet out of nowhere. Oh no. And then I was trying to buy something, and then my bank card got like, they said it was fraudulent. Yeah. So then I didn't have a bank card, and then I didn't have internet. And I was probably like two kilometers away. Oh. And then I, I I finally found a place with internet, but Uber wouldn't work because my credit card got flagged. Mm-hmm. And I just basically like had to like walk home, but I didn't really know where it was. So I was old school asking people for directions because I'm so I was just like stuck in the <laughs> middle of nowhere with like no phone and no internet. And I was just like, the city is eating me alive. Yeah, and Brisbane's kind of difficult because it's pretty windy and hilly. No, I just I had the hotel key. That's the only thing I had. Yeah. And like every once in a while, I'd go to someone and they'd point me in the direct general direction yeah so ev- eventually i got to enough places where it was like okay now i'm near uh where stuff is yeah and then i could ask someone every like 10 seconds and they just find it oh you describe i had a dream about this i'm going to the uk it was it felt time. very dystopian dude yeah <laughs> it's my worst nightmare i was like do i have to tell my bank i'm going to the uk i know that's why well you're not supposed to but the problem is they they uh it, it, when you get a suspicious activity you need to like call them or log in, but it's like I couldn't log in, and then you, I could if I called them. Uh, also, they're like, "Hey, we need to send a text message to your phone," and I'm like, "Okay, I'm not getting any text messages yeah. right now." So it's like whole thing was just like, that's why. I'll, how many times do people say, um, like, "Oh, it was probably like better in the good old days," like mm-hmm. kind of thing? And you're just like, my mom says it all the time. She's like, "Oh, fucking bring back pen and paper." Uh, I'll tell you what, it definitely wasn't better in the good old days. It's like <laughs> having to walk around aimlessly for hours. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a map. Yeah, have you ever have you ever given it's a useless someone, skill now? I've given directions before and just not known, and just like panicked in the moment. Someone goes, "Do you know where this is?" And I've gone, "Thank oh, you." Just way. lie, and no, I didn't lie. I just gave an answer, and then I was like, "Fuck!" I hope I was right. <laughs> no, I would never screw someone like that. But that's terrible that you would. Do yeah, that. I'm really sorry. I felt, I felt awful for about forty minutes. I thought, "Fuck!" I hope they asked someone else. It was basically, what was happening to me? Because I probably took a wrong turn like three times, dude. I got a blister from walking so much. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, literally, I, was like, I can't walk another minute. I, probably, I was on the I was on foot for a good hour fifteen, just trying to like get back home. That's tough. Yeah. How are you finding Australia? I think that is pretty fine. Yeah. Yeah. Being on the other time zone, probably the negatives were the time zone. So mm-hmm. that's a big. That's a also like I was kind of thinking of it yesterday. So if something happens here. And you guys are talking about it. It's like in the future because you'll be like, oh, this happened Wednesday. And then everyone. Yeah. So if everyone, the rest of the world's like, oh, so six days ago. Well, we I feel like it's a news clip. It's weird. It's it is. Sometimes it is. We we're like th- stuff that happens like in the States or Canada. Yeah, that will happen at like three in the morning for us. So yeah. we wake up to like Donald Trump getting shot. That was at three in the morning. No, I watched that like 10 minutes after it happened. What time was that? I think that was uh, that. Oh man, I can't even remember what time it was, but it was rare that I was around. And I was, I reckon it was the first time I'd ever watched like a historical moment happen in real time. Yeah. Whereas you get that Uh like every day there. Yeah. And also on top of that, I felt one thing that was interesting because I uh, went out and did some shows with Nima when Mm -hmm. I was in uh, Melbourne and just watching all the comics, just like, it's interesting to me. And Canada has a bit too where I'm from, but I live in New York. The, uh, Um, so many uh, comics have like bits about America yeah like specific where you're just like Mm. you know uh, something about George Bush or this and that where it's like 
And it was kind of like, it's funny to watch just like a different country and everyone just talks about the other country. Like we have an obsession. Yeah. But every country does a little bit. It's yeah. like a little brother kind of thing. Right. hundred percent. The cult, it's like this, it's, we have this weird, like superiority and inferiority. Cult, like, yeah. Yeah. Most Australians are like, thank fuck. I don't live there. America sucks. Yeah. That was, that's kind but of the vibe. Yeah. We do all obsess over <laughs> it. Whether we like it or we don't like it, we're, we're locked in. That's what it's Canada the best has, TV yeah. show ever. <laughs> it was like, you can imagine we had to live in Canada. And it's like also like we follow all their things every moment of it. Yeah. <laughs> when they have like a big event, we do it uh, two d- two years later. Yeah, that's it. I think like because I I want to live in the states, and so many of my Australian friends and family look at me when I say that. They go, "Are you fucking crazy? Why would you want it?" My dad had a negative opinions of Americans. Yeah, He's yeah, like, they're all assholes. But I think <laughs> I think that the best. Uh, the best option is like the person who is choosing to live in America. If you have to live there and you fail, you're fucked. But if I go there and I fail, I just get to come back to like healthcare and <laughs> sure. you know, mm-hmm. it's very low stakes for me. That's true. But th- obviously it's better to just be born there. Like, yeah, probably. It, it's well, like it, immigration law is very expensive. Immigration is expensive. Like you also just starting your life over as an adult in a different country. Like even just little things. Like if you have kids, you're like, I don't have any family around. Like all that kind of stuff. You're obviously yeah. at a disadvantage. What? So what age did you move over? Uh, thirty-three. Yeah. Right. And uh, like I had a pretty normal life. Yeah. That I like. I had like a, you know, a, like a house, a studio, like a studio that we built. Mm-hmm. Because also you build, like in film stuff, like, you know, I had the 12 people in our building and we'd all been doing stuff forever. So you yeah. got to just start again with a lot of that stuff as an adult. Mm. But he also uh, reminds me of in Canada, like Quebec, like bands would kind of be popular, you know, like a band would kind of be popular and then it would kind of be like over. Yeah. And then you'd go to like a lot of those places. Just kind of, a lot of times there'd be like some band from the nineties and you know, you'd hear like, oh, they're still huge there. Yes. It was kind of like, you're just almost like popular still forever as opposed to things are like done when they're done in America, especially mm. and more so other places. But it kind of was reminding me a lot of, um, it really is like an older brother that everyone dresses like and acts like. Yeah. And then let's say he was like a goth, right? So he comes home and he's like, oh, I'm into this music and this. Yeah. And then all the younger brothers like start acting like that and dressing like that. Mm-hmm. Then he goes to college and he comes back. He does, he's like dresses completely <laughs> normal. And he's like, oh, you guys are still doing that? Like, yeah. So, and I feel that sometimes there's little cultural things where it's, you go back to Canada and people are talking about stuff and you're like, oh, that thing's like over. Oh, Australia's just starting their <laughs> MAGA era. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. we've just started the 2016 Trump stuff. Yeah, it does feel That's like it. Yeah. Off now where we've got like, we have people imitating like Milo Yiannopoulos and they're trying to do that on Sky News, which is like our Fox News. Right. And it's really interesting to watch. Yeah, it's about, it's about eight years behind. Yeah, eight might be, like I, I give it four. Yeah. Eight, eight's like with the internet. It probably used to be eight with the internet. It catches up I think a little the, quicker. I think the people are four, but media is eight. Like, Interesting. Like actual TV and radio and stuff. We're eight years behind. Like for example, you see, you're seeing like hey, TV th- and radio is still like a viable job that people are trying to get here. Ah. So we're about eight years behind. Is that government subsidized? Uh, some of it is. Yeah. Maybe that's even, one reason. Even like that. the only job you can get as a comedian is like radio here and then private the private is the big one it does seem like i always see clips of australia and it's like radio guys yes i guess they're serious xm guys in america so they kind of have it but yeah but yeah definitely you're saying that people are doing like uh 2016 yeah like american politics kind of stuff yeah 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 i think so and it's just it's not working because i think that um i mean i don't know if is canada compulsory voting no. No? I have a theory. You have to compulsory vote here? Yeah, you have to vote. And I think that's what happens the if you don't only vote? thing. You get fined. What's the fine? The f- few hundred dollars. Okay, so yeah. whatever. So uh, I, th- I have a theory, though, that compulsory voting is the only way to keep your politics, like, not full of fucking freaks. Why do you think? That, why does it help? Because it's a chore, right? No one wants to do it. So it's like a thing that we go, all oh, right, I have to go and vote. So I'll do some research. But at the end of the day, whoever I'm voting for is a fucking dickhead because I don't want to be there. Where it's a, when it's a, it seems like an honor and a privilege, people get real hyped up about it. Yeah, whereas in America, it seems like you either have to love the person you're voting for or, or hate the, the other person. <laughs> and that's the only thing that will motivate anyone enough. Do any other like, countries have that? Is that just in Australia? Compulsory thing? voting? I'm not sure. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of re- like dictatorships that throw away the compulsory yeah, votes compulsory have votes. You have to vote and we're not going to look at it. Yeah, I think they had one of those in Venezuela recently. Yeah, people are rioting over that. Yeah, I haven't 
dug deep into it, but it's like I saw one thing where it was like the hundred and ten percent of the population voted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw. I think the, I haven't looked into it much. It's like just happening. But I think, like, yeah, what I saw was the electronic votes were like, oh, this guy won by a landslide. Yeah. And then everyone was like, really? Can we see, like, the paper version? And they were like, no. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> we're not, uh, that's <laughs> we burned them. Dude, I've definitely uh, know people, yeah, definitely more in America than Canada, that have, like, they take offense if you don't vote. Mm. They've, they're very, like, you, what are you, insane? Like, you have, like, it's very, very important. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm just like, it's not, though. <laughs> I think especially like when you live in like places where it's already set yeah like the way it's set up like it's it's like you it's it's like one of those like I hate having beliefs that you just like have to think it but it's not true because mm. dude there's so many people there's like you have to vote and you're like you don't know and it's like doesn't make a difference and but it, do you think it, like, it ob- but it objectively it does compulsory, it it might completely flip because don't you I, sometimes I, I don't know I, I'm obviously I don't live there but well no because I, like the way that it works is most of these places are already like there's like New York's going to vote like uh, liberal. It's just like that's how it's going to be. But is that because all the conservative people are lazy and they can't be fucked going? No, it's because there's not as many of them. Yeah, yeah. It's because that's the like the culture of the mm. city or whatever. Yeah. And the part of it is that they've moved to places where they agree with more, right? Yes. Which is good, but also it makes like it's most. Well, they have places called swing states or whatever, where yes. it's like maybe there your vote matters. Well, I guess that's that's doesn't. also like the two party system versus preferential voting, which what we what we have here. So, do you know about preferential? What well, that's parliamentary. So, so, how we do it in Australia is is we don't vote for one person. We actually vote one through ten of like you put your most preferred person oh. on the top, and then uh, so I'll usually vote for like the Animal Justice Party. Because I give a fuck about like animal rights, but I so know they're not going to win. So sometimes so my vote will go to the next most popular party. Because I, but my vote gets counted, and then the next most popular party will be like, oh, a lot of people voted for this issue. Maybe we should incorporate that. But also, it it helps because then you can't just run like a love hate campaign. Yes. Because yeah. you you need to, like if you if you run like a super divisive like mm. everyone like th- these guys are the enemy yeah then you won't get any number two votes yeah yeah pretty yeah much. if you don't get any, and you need the number two votes because they actually work for something yes yeah, yeah that sort of probably keeps it a little more civil right it kind of it kind of trickles out and and moves I think it probably moves it a lot slower but it does stop that like fucking whiplash that seems to happen in other countries uh-huh. of, like we we love abortion no we don't. It's yeah. You know, that's probably like a settled issue here, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not really a big deal. It's not, they're not opening that one back up. No, no. Like I don't know where my local abortion clinic is. You know, whereas it seems like everyone knows exactly where they are in the states, and they're either picketing or attending to yell at the picketers. What do you mean you don't know where the clinic is? Like you're saying, oh, in a, like in, I live in New York. I don't know where the abortion clinics are. Uh, maybe you haven't got enough women pregnant. I get you're saying you're like in your mind is that like all the abortion no, clinics are just, just con- not constantly a protest outside of them. No, what I mean is like <laughs> in in Australia, like the cities are small enough that if there were protests outside our abortion clinic, like we would know exactly where we were. <laughs> sure, are. you know what I mean. Yeah, but but it's not. It wouldn't. There's no point of it because it's like a sealed issue. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, in Canada, the guy. Uh, it's sort of the same thing. It's a sealed issue. Mm. But in America, they can kind of say like, you know, it's like a good. Uh, uh, a good politics thing for to be able to be like, yo, they're trying to get rid of abor- abortion. You probably yeah. get so much. In Canada, they try that where the guy's like, he's going to get rid of abortions. And the guy's like, yeah, I didn't ever say anything like that. <laughs> but like they're, tr- they're trying to like yeah. make it stick where it's like, oh, he's a guy who hates abortions. He's like, I've never even mentioned them. <laughs> yeah. There, there is. Because they're trying to use the like American techniques. It's exactly. But we're seeing that as well where like there's so much like fear mongering. <laughs> like this but, guy's not going to get rid of abortion. He hasn't even like talked yeah, about it. Yeah. Where they go, this guy's Hitler. And he's like, well, I just, no, I'm not. And then everyone's like, I don't think he is. <laughs> The best guy here is the Barnaby Joyce guy, probably. He's awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it seemed like... Uh, so he, like, was prime minister? No, he wasn't prime minister. I thought he was, like... Uh, no, yeah. he was just, like, a pretty high-up politician. Uh, oh. But he... But he I thought it said it recently. I didn't think he was a prime minister, and then I was reading about him, like, recently, and I thought it said that he... He like, or maybe it was a prim- or maybe it was like a uh, like a state premier or whatever. But I thought it was. Didn't he like serve for two years because the other guy like 
left halfway through and like without getting voted in just took it if that makes no, sense. No, that's a different prime minister you're thinking of. We had we had a, a fucking we had like a good 8 years where we went through something like 6 four to six prime ministers. Like I can't even remember how many we had. We had in like in like a two election cycle we had Kevin Rudd, Julia Gillard, uh and then like a bunch of other two other people because they kept we we voted someone in and then they kept fighting. And then we would vote the other people in and then that the, those people who won would be fighting. It was fucking a mess for a while. Yeah. Like, this is the first couple of prime ministers we've had now. The last two where we're like, oh, we think we're going to keep them. And huh. even the parties are like, yeah, we're going to keep these. And guys. there's no term limits. Uh, no, there's not. Yeah. yeah so, so, like, John Howard was the longest prime minister for, for, like, I think it was, like, over a decade. Yeah, it's pretty good. It was like a few terms. We've had the, the guy, Justin Trudeau, has been prime minister for, I don't know, almost 12 years. He'll be something. prime minister until he stops being fuckable, I think. No, he's him. done next time. You reckon he's done? Yeah, people are over it. The the, the super, I'm, I've, I'm seeing a lot of his opponent demolishing him in the state, it seems, from just oh, being that, like... Dude, that's... I, I feel like... Fucking, I'm the fucking businessman. That's man. why Parliament's so funny. Yeah. Like, the, the, the best are... It kind, of, it kind of seems like ancient Rome shit. Yeah. But it's like uh, so many, like you'll see just like random Hungary or something and they're like fist fights in their parliament. Yeah. I don't think they have that in America, but that's hilarious. Well, yeah, but some, some Texan senator would pull out a gun if they were doing that in the States. They, I don't know if they've ever, maybe they have, but like I feel like it's more common that they have these like petty battles yelling and screaming at yeah. each other. I guess I... I guess recently they had some of that mm. because now everyone's trying to get their viral moment, right? Yeah. It's like literally everyone's in parliament, like conscious of like, this is my crowd work clip. Oh, and you know what's really, <laughs> what's really funny is they're doing the hacky thing with, in, you know, like a lot of hacky comics will do slideshows. Whereas yeah. politicians are printing out giant posters. <laughs> sure. Because you can't bring a projector screen into parliament, but they know that the kids want images like the Daily Show. Yeah. So they'll have someone with like a, like 15 massive placards be like, this is your tweet, is it not? Dude, this that's 100%. And they bring in like, they'll bring in this, you know, the CEO of TikTok or whatever to like yeah. give him a grilling. But you're just like, it's all like none of, no, nothing's changing. It's all just like for these guys to line up and like, Dude, it'd be literally if there was everyone was at a show and there was like a really crazy guy in the front row yeah. and every comic was like, oh, I'm going to get a clip talking to this wacky guy. And it's like they all one by one go and be like, look at all, you know, like this guy died because of your thing and yeah. like you should be ashamed of yourself. And they sort of like, <laughs> they get like berate him, they get they give him a stern talking to him and then they post it on their channel. Do you reckon like... It does feel between, like it's all for clips. Yeah, absolutely. Do you reckon in between, in between sets they'll like argue with you? Dude, you fucking stepped on my bit. Yeah, dude, you, you know, know, that's I, my you know I'm the guy who scolds that way. I'm the fucking abortion guy, that's my gear. Yeah, he's probably sitting there and just, the, like, the congressman starts crying and he's just like, what the fuck? You know I'm the cry dude. <laughs> No, for sure. <laughs> if you have to go off last and everyone's yeah. no meat on the bone left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go, fuck, I guess I'm going to cry. Yeah. yeah oh, I just love the, all, the, all the super old politicians grilling a tech CEO about the internet and they don't know. It is what. ridiculous to watch sometimes, yeah. yeah. They like it just, well, I mean, some of this stuff's like crazy complicated. Yeah. And they'll be grilling on you're like, this guy doesn't like know how Instagram works as yes. a user, let alone as yeah. a you know what I mean? So it's like they don't have no idea what the like trade offs they're talking about are. Yeah, it's like they're asking some incredibly complex question about the how the how the company follows. Yeah, some tax card, and it's they're asking like, the CEO, and he's like, "Dude, you know we have five hundred accountants. Like, I can answer this, but I'm going to need a month." I know, and sometimes you're like, I, "Probably these like do need to be talked about," but it's like mm. this guy fundamentally doesn't understand how algorithms work. Yeah, and like they just they're just. Like, this conversation is to get the clip of the CEO looking dumb. Dude, it's a guy that's not into comedy or, like, understands comedy, uh, like, yelling at you. I always kind of describe it as, like, uh, like when you watch, um, like, a, I guess it would be, I don't know what you have cheerleaders for here. What's the sport that you have cheerleaders for? We don't really have cheerleaders. No cheerleaders? Okay, well, really. football. But right. I know what cheerleaders are. You know, football, are. whatever. They have, yeah. in, in the intermissions, they have someone yeah. come do, like, a show or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. And... For everyone else, that's just like, okay, there's this show going on, I'll go get food, whatever. It's like yeah. not a big deal. But for like the people there, that's like the biggest deal, right? Yeah. So they'd kind of, if everyone was like, hey, why are you doing it this way? Like, why don't you just, why, like, uh, this is kind of taking too long. Can you move? Like, 
you know what? Let's just not have it today. Like it's so easy to just be like, oh, let's get rid of that. Yeah. Like I feel like some people would feel that about like jokes where they just like there's some negative or externality where you're like, oh, this feels like it's bothering some people, and you're just like, okay, let's just get rid of this. Like yeah. they don't understand like the trade offs. That's yes. the kind of the like what the, a lot of these you know bureaucrats mm. grilling like tech it feels like yes the same with crypto or whatever like they'll have the like, crypto guy on not a lot of these guys like don't really have a fundamental understanding of crypto and then they'll kind of be like well people lost money like we need to make more rules and you're like yeah there's like another side of that though there's like yes there is an argument on both of those sides and you're yeah. only understanding like the yeah, argument like, for a lot of people lost money but like so many people made money and this new technology is being created. Yeah, and, and it's not even that. were real. And on top of that, rules, you wouldn't have been able to. You're like, well, w- what's the alternative yeah. of people not being able to lose money? Is that only rich people can do it? Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. The other side of that is like, yeah, you're giving it a monopoly to people who because are able to like do your regulations. Normal people made money. Like in the stock market, but playing by the rules was GameStop, and then they fucking turned it off and changed the rules and tried to stop it, and they're still. Yeah. Like very obviously very upset that somehow retail investors managed to make money by fucking over hedge funds. Like the one time the hedge funds fucked up and people figured out how to exploit the system, they're like, "We're gonna change the rules." But people have a really hard time with like edge cases of like if there's like a guy that lost a million dollars, yeah, whatever, and it's like you're like, "Oh, all you all you need is a couple good stories of like, yeah." a person to appeal to normal people to be like, wait, this guy lost everything. Like we have to do something about this. Mm. But it's like, usually the thing they do about it is like, well, th- let's, let's make more rules. So the banks make more money. Yes. Yeah. That's the only way to stop it from happening ever again. Yeah. But it always kind of goes in that way. It's like people just have, uh, they, people can't handle watching edge cases of bad things happening to people. Mm. Once it becomes a public story. Yeah. I suppose it's, it's like we have to do something about this. Yeah, it's a lot. What's happening in Sydney? What's happening in Sydney? The fucking a guy got punched. Yes. Remember? Yeah. It's like yeah, and they're like, and they ruined. We have to do something forever. about this. But you know all... who benefited from that? I don't know if you know about this. Who benefited? They, yes, someone. So they did. they they shut down all these bars, or they introduced lockout laws where I think it was. I'm not from Sydney, but I believe it was like if you left a place after a certain time, you couldn't go back in anywhere. So you could stay in a place, but if you left, like you couldn't bar hop. Like I remember one time in Sydney, we sprinted from one club to another because our friends were there. We missed it by two minutes. They're so like, we can't let you in. Um, and so that's how they run. And then every everywhere in King's Cross shut down, which is like the popular night spot. They all shut down. and But all these bars were affected by all these rules that almost essentially made it impossible to make money. But if you looked at the map where they drew the the lines – it excluded just the the big casino. Uh, so if you looked at it on a map, it quite literally just funneled everyone after a certain uh, time into the casino. That was the only place you could go to get pissed and gamble. Yeah. Right? All you and do is pick winners and losers. 100%. And then the premier, the New South Wales premier just went down for corruption recently. She just appealed that. She lost the appeal. Was the corruption taking money from the casino? Yes. Yo, that's fuck yeah yeah and there's there's been a bunch of that especially in new south wales of just funneling people into the casinos and that and i think even this might be wrong i guess in america they just call that a lobby they're like yes. yeah they're donating all this money and you're like yeah they, they call corruption a lobby yeah <laughs> you're like you know yeah. that's part of it it's crazy like when i when i was because when you hear about lobbies like in american politics you're like oh yeah lobby that must be like some part of like something feels like it's part of government. Like, what is, what just what does that mean? Rate. You're like, well, it's mainly big tobacco giving like people money. Yeah. <laughs> like I remember a politician. So they can get rid of vapes. <laughs> a politician here got like a three hundred dollar bottle of wine, and it was headlines for fucking vapes. <laughs> and he, I think he even got fired for it, maybe. But then, <laughs> and then in the states, like the pharmaceutical companies can like take doctors out for lunch and give all this money to politicians. Yeah, there's, like, probably rules about what they can do, but, like, what they definitely can do is, like, give money to campaigns and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's such a... It's a very... I mean, and that's, like, a huge reason why America is so great and so fucked. It's, like... It's both, you know? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's more corrupt countries than, uh, 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 like, America, but... It, it always kind of feels like that when they're just like, oh, let's solve this problem. And you're like, all you're doing is like taking money from one person and giving it to another person almost always. Yeah, they're both millionaires who don't need the money. <laughs> they're just moving it around. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what the vape thing was. Like, mm-hmm. recently, they're, like, getting rid yeah. of vapes and zins, and it was like, like, who, who stands to gain from that? Yeah, the tobacco companies. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, we've got Brisbane. We're doing Brisbane tonight. It was such a fun uh, spot opening for your crowd. They're cool. Melbourne was sick, yeah. Melbourne was great. That was great, great theater, great show. Yeah, yeah. And I think tonight should be kind of similar, I think. Brisbane... I have a good feeling about it. In my experience, my crowds at least, Brisbane's almost always the best. Audience. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the right mix of, of like, City and Bogan. Where it's, it's Bogan, man. Bogan is, like, kind of like redneck, I mm. suppose. It's like the Australian redneck where it's just, like, uh, you know, burnouts and beer and fucking yelling and sport and, you know, rowdy behavior. Yeah. Right, but because we're in Brisbane and we're, like, in the city, it's like there's a little bit of, like, restraint in there. So the crowd is like super loud. You say like kind of country it. people that live in a city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're super loud and they're up for it, but they won't trash the venue. They're not just like make yelling at you to drink out of a shoe the whole time. Well, that might happen. Yeah. <laughs> but if Frenchie opened for you and it didn't happen, you might be safe here. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I want to drink out of a shoe. <laughs> no, no. But if you don't do it and they ask you to, they might boo. I've heard you. people like getting sick and shit. Like, oh yeah, people get sick. You like, shouldn't do it. it it's so, terrible. It's like so gross. It's fucking foul. It's like gross. Is tradition. Yeah, it's absolute. It's horrific. And and yeah, there's a few guys like Frenchie sort of that are probably responsible for why everyone does it. Yeah, yeah, Frenchie's a big part of it. But also, it just became like a running joke to fuck with. It's mostly musicians that will do it too. Oh, they make. <laughs> yeah. Although I would, I would I love can to imagine see. some rapper wanted to drink out of some random guy's shit. <laughs> yeah, I think that be like, Post Malone did what? it. Yeah. Well, Paul, yeah, I can. See, yeah, he's he's down for whatever. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, like some hood rapper just being like, nah, you nah, know, man, no, you know, that's gay shit. <laughs> yeah, that would be the if anyone would interpret it as gay, it would be like some rapper from. The- it is a little gay. <laughs> you reckon? I guess if it's a stranger's shoe, he's drinking out of a dude's shoe. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Drinking his foot juices. Yeah, yeah, that is especially at a at a music show because you know I mean, he's like, sweating into it all night. Yeah, it's it like happens at the end of the something show. Something you something someone would do as like if they're like sexually into that. <laughs> like you yeah. picture a guy like paying a prostitute to drink out of her shoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would happen for sure. That'd be yeah, that'd be that'd be like Perverted a red flag. Is what it is. <laughs> That's a red flag if someone's too excited to do a shoe. Like, can I please do a shoe? Exactly, yeah. Please, yes. From, you, from her shoe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not yours, hers. He's licking it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of what it is. <laughs> so, um, what what have you what have you been um, working on over, over in the States, like since since you've moved to what you're doing now? Like how has it changed your career? Because it's something that I want to do. Um, mm-hmm. like in the near future as soon as I can like yeah. why did you move what happened afterwards I feel like right now I'm sort of just like in a zone where you're kind of like probably especially with the internet probably like my biggest problem right now is you're just like there's infinite things you can do yeah and it's just like constantly like figuring okay you're like what should I do mm. you know what I mean yeah because I think that's one of the problems with like the internet too where you just like you just like you're like okay if I'm doing all these things and you only have one person. Yes. And then you're kind of like, okay, well, I, a lot of the wisdom is to like hire the right people and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, okay. But like a lot of times you hire people and you just like, if you kind of remove yourself from it, you just watch it slowly like disintegrate. Yes. Yeah. Like know, everything's getting done. Well, they're not you. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's like, so you're, I feel like that's platform, my biggest thing I'm thinking like, about right now. Yeah. On so many platforms, like what works on one does not work at all on another. And then there's platforms. And yeah. The reverse. Yeah. So you, so yeah, you kind of have to pick. like, what should I be spending my time on? Is it, yes. is like a kind of a big issue that I have right now sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like trying to, I just, I just recorded an hour that I'm going to release soon. And so I'm like putting together a new hour and you're like, that should like, could be something that I'm like, that's all I'm doing. Yes. You know what I mean? Doing, you know, just five just hours of stand up every night and yeah. like writing for four hours every day, trying to put this new hour together. Mm. And you're like, okay, well then everything else will fall apart. So it's like, yes. I feel like that's the hardest part about the best part about, you know, kind of running your own thing and not having any, uh, uh, like kind of relying on everyone else. There's obviously like a million good parts about that, but I feel like yeah. the best, the bad part about it is you're always kind of having that, like, uh, you're always choosing like, what not to do. You're always choosing what not to do, yeah. yeah. And especially if you're traveling, like, you know how you have a certain amount of, like, decision-making power, kind of? Yes. You know? Yeah. Like, when you're traveling and, you know, kind of doing comedy, a lot of times you're using decision-making power. And yeah. so every, so much stuff of that, I feel like you're sometimes, like, drained of decision-making power. 
and it like kind of constantly have to make big decisions. Yes, big financial decisions as well. Yeah, and and also while all this shit's going on, you kind of should be not thinking about any of it and being like, oh, women are like this, and that's you should be in your head thinking happen. about like ideas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and jokes. Yes, yeah, which is which is very difficult when your work is in the phone and. So it's I know, and you're traveling around everywhere, and you're like, "Fuck, I'm yeah, trying to get to my hotel." So yeah, there's definitely like, I mean, being being uh, running a business where you're just like, "Okay, I'm like super attached to my phone," and there's some certain people that have like, you know, I remove myself that from. I record my specials, my podcast. That's it. Mm. People post the things. I'm kind of not involved, but it's like, yeah, you're doing probably more current stuff too. So you kind of have to be like involved on a more day to day. Yeah, yeah. Like I, like yeah. You and me both do stuff about the news, and it's like, fuck, what happened this morning? Yeah. Can I go up on stage and get a bit out of it, or is this a sketch? Or you know, yeah. I've started to be think about like the way to handle it in some respects is just sort of like disappear for a month and then like then you are all in for like a month and then you sort of mm. you know what I mean trying but I don't know exactly yeah but I've been trying to I've been trying to sort of like make sense about it and it's been difficult on this tour a little bit yeah I'm, I'm finding like it's been very yeah I've had to choose between because I'm filming all of my stand-up clips and everything but I haven't been putting very many of them out because I'm currently touring and I'm like oh well I don't want my YouTube to fall apart while I'm touring yeah. around so I'm going to do the longer form stuff and I'm, I don't want to miss a single podcast episode so I'm like focusing on them but then when the tour ends well that's kind of good now I have a whole year's worth of clips see I'm to always make. touring I'm not, I don't yeah. have a tour that ends yes that yeah. would be better no I'm like I kind of took a month and a half off but ended up like just doing all this like I was gone every weekend anyway because I was like figure catching up on all this normal stuff and I went back to Canada for a week and yes. did all this stuff so then yeah it must be even harder when when you yeah you've born in another country it's like oh, if I have a month off I kind of got to go see family I did have to yeah I hadn't, yeah. hadn't done that in a long time yeah and then so yeah there's that I had to go to the, I went to a wedding like mm. you know some normal shit yeah and then basically uh, then I'm touring for maybe eight months. Wow. But like not, it's not every night. It's like, uh, you know, on for five days and back for, you know, five. But like a lot of times it's like Thursday to Saturday. Five like, three weeks in a row. What? Five on, five off. It's not, but, well, it's, it's not completely do, that. But uh, it's kind of is like that. Fly a little bit, for a yeah. week and then come back. But to me, that's easier. Mm. But again, this would like doing a big tour is not crazy if you're like, oh, I don't tour for three months and I go on tour. Yeah. That's not really what I'm doing. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm back for, I was just back for in New York for four days and then just like trying to cram in a million things. And then I came here for like a week and a half or two weeks or whatever. Then I go back for three days. Then I am in, gone that Thursday to Sunday. Yes. On tour. So it's kind of like forever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sort of trying, I'm trying to make sense of it, but yeah. I don't know. The, it's, do you have a, have a team of people helping you? Or yeah, I have it, people that work with me. Yeah. 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 But, uh, do you bring them around when you tour? Um, no. Yeah, you just leave them. No, because it's like, it would be just bringing, I'm not, I'd be bringing like a whole entourage every weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've like know, traveled with like a camera guy before and that's well, good, but they're expensive. That I have. Yeah, yeah, camera guy comes with me, but he actually is a stand up and he does stand up. Yeah, yeah. So cool. the guy who features for me also mm -hmm. films. Yeah. Cool. Which that's a good thing to do, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, well, you know, that's like, yeah, now I'm like just getting back in there because I had a whole team and then I got rid of everyone to go through my whole surgery. Mm -hmm. So like the, ble it's, it's obviously you wouldn't choose to go through it, but the blessing of that is like, okay, I've kind of done everything and I've lived in the frantic and then I had to, I had to stop for like a year. And now I'm like, okay. That must have stressed you out at like for the first month or two and then did it sort of like subside where you're just like, oh, it is what it is. There was, there, yeah. It, well, there was a period where, like, after I got the surgery, that actually made me feel better. But I had to, I still couldn't like really you, work your for brain, about four like, months. deconnected from my, all the stuff. Yeah, my brain deconnected. There wasn't this stress of I should be doing something. I should be doing something because I just, I just decided, like, if I want to get, yeah, that has to be like to stop. that has to be bad for your brain. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. Well, we know this. Like, stress is bad. Stress um, is, yeah, the terrible. Yes, that's the heart attack when you're 60. I know. Like, oh, fuck, I was worried about skin. That's what I went. I did my blood work, and they were like, stress is like your biggest problem. Yeah, yeah. I've been kind of doing a joke about it, but. Yeah, so, like, but now, because I had to stop, now I'm building things up, and I'm trying to add things in one at a time, and do it, plug it in, and make sure it's running properly, and then be like, okay, do I have more bandwidth for the next thing? Yeah. And that's been a lot better than 
you know, which what I had to do, which was experiencing rapid growth and being like, fuck, and doing it all at once. And then being like, oh shit, I think I'm doing everything the most inefficient, stressful way possible, but I can't And you're like stop sprinting anything. and you're like, I can't yes. sprint forever, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's e- it's easier when it's in a period of growth. It's almost like that's the easier part. But then you're not always. A lot of times you grow yeah. and then you just stay the same for yeah. a while. And then you know something pops and then you stay the same. It's the stay the same where you're just like. Sometimes you're like uh, probably the hardest in like a company that's just like you know the CEO who's working you know ninety plus hours just to like stay the same. Yes. It's like you it, yeah. it, when you're working ninety plus hours and it's growing. It's like a little the stay it the feels same a lot period. Yeah, the yeah. stay the same periods is probably yes. more stressful when you're like, dude, I'm because then you're just like, oh, I'm not like I, I'm like. Uh, on this grind to like, just like to, you're like just hanging on. Well, it's, you have to, it's, yeah, you have to like, I have this, this problem that I'm trying to get over of like, if I'm not growing, I'm going backwards, but like, that's not true. You know? Yeah. Maintaining. Sometimes it can be. Sometimes it can be. But like, if you're, yeah, if you're, if you're not going through a rapid spike and you're just like maintaining and now some still, of those guys say like, I mean, we're probably in the middle, but some of those dudes are like streamers. Yeah. Um, the, you know, their whole life is streaming, you know, eight hours a day or whatever. That's so like, fun. you know how you might be like, Oh, I didn't have a big thing this like week or whatever. He mm-hmm. says like a lot of those guys are like, I'm not currently viral. Yes. Like if, if like they were viral, like yesterday, mm-hmm. they're like, Oh, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I think streaming it's like, it's already COVID. 10 PM. I haven't been viral in the four hours. Dude, like, that's just so <laughs> stressful. I don't know how the fuck people stay on for like eight hours, 10 hours a day for like seven days a week. They don't stop. I think a big part of it is that they grew up in that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, kind of know how there's like certain standups that, started stand up when they were like 16 and their personality is kind of like mm. built around stand up not vice versa. Yes. Like yeah. the way that they sort of do everything in their life revolves around stand up not vice versa. Yeah. And I think a lot of those streamers it's like their personality and like brain pathways and the way that they interact with the world was built the other way. Yeah, their so brain grew around they, streaming. Yeah, so it's yeah. almost normal. It's like when you when you watch the like the Olympics is on if you watch any of the Chinese athletes win, they just go Cool. Very, very normal for you them. Know? Yeah, like, oh, good, I won't be beaten, you know? Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, the win is, the win is, like, just acceptable. Oh, good. I it's not something to celebrate. It's myself. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. So, I, th- I think that's, I think yeah, anyone can adapt to anything, but it's hard. I think it's just, like, it's hard for people to adapt as an adult when mm-hmm. everything's set. Yes. So, you kind of need to adapt things around you to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people, like I know streamers that are like 25 and they've been doing it for, you know, since they were 12 or whatever. Mm. And it's like a lot of these people, they look at like the internet. It's almost like feels futuristic where they kind yeah. of everything is like fake to them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like if people hate them on the internet, it's fake. If people like them, it's fake. Like everything's just like a game. Like it's all a, a lot of people that are big internet people really feel like they're like playing in like the simulation and there's like not well, they, a detachment between what their life is. You know, I mean, relationships are all fake. Like their well, I just friendships about are this all based on, my, on. I was talking about like all these YouTubers that have been like, ex, like exposed for like preying on kids and stuff. And I think a huge part of it is exactly that, where they hit 15 and then they become famous or they, they see the start of fame and then they just don't have to be an adult ever again from that point. And you don't have any peers, you don't have any bosses, you don't have any interactions. You're saying they, they're like, they're stunted as like a teenager sort of? Yeah, they get stunted and then there's no reason for them to mature because they, you don't have any... Re- and you're actually would be, re- what's the opposite of rewarded... Uh, reprimanded and no, maybe what's the opposite of rewarded in uh, discouraged or penalized penalized yeah i like it P- you'd be you're almost penalized for changing your personality to right? an adult for sure because if you <laughs> if you blow up as a 15 year old and all, all that means all your fans are like 12 plus <laughs> yeah. you know your fans are always lagging about five years behind you in age or if you blow up as like a Fortnite youtuber you're just earnest uh, churning through 12 year olds constantly that's your fan base and then they grow out of you they don't give a fuck about you anymore yeah so yeah you're penalized by maturing even just like the experience of me going through the airport and like if i fuck up something someone else is going to yell at me when you when you blow up on youtube or streaming where you don't really leave the house very much at all you don't have these like external factors you know yeah putting the idea that if i fuck up 
it will affect my real life. Well, it's almost the opposite. If you fuck up, you're just like, oh, this will be yeah. good. Yeah. This is good content. Yes. Like you, you, if you, if you live your life like a drama for other people, mm. it was like every bad thing. If you like, you're all, oh, I'm going through a breakup. Like, yeah, that's actually better content than like things are fine at home. Yeah, every pu- every breakup is public. <laughs> we all like, like that should be a hit tweet. Yeah, it's so fucked. Yeah, to be like yeah, like you. It, I mean, it's the same thing as like we with, have that with comedians. comedy of like this sucks, but it might maybe be a good bit. Well, I was saying the comedians that are like super overweight. You know what I mean? You're mm-hmm. just like it, the fatter you get, it sort of like helps your your thing, right? Yeah, that's your like shtick almost. Yes, but like there's health versions of that, or like you know how many. Uh, you know, uh, people were like, oh, I was, I'm this like mess drug addict. Like that's always like kind of an attractive story. Yes. But yeah, it's like, I'm popular for like, I have all this drama. And Russell Brand like, had just a like, political guy when he stopped doing drugs and fucking all these chicks. He's <laughs> yeah. like, fuck, that was my whole now thing. Now he's Christian. Yeah. Now he's a good Christian. He's man. all in about whatever he's in, eh? Yeah, he loves it. It's so funny. Dude, that, I don't think any, that guy's ever done anything like a bit. <laughs> no, no, he's like fucking. It's yeah, you know. There's there's people like in England where they'll be like, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna watch the news, and then they'll turn on Russell Brand. Oh. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah. Have you done UK before? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I came here because I did UK and it was like, pop, it was very like successful. Mm. So then we're, and then we were talking to the Australia people and I was kind of like, in my mind, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to, I just, it just feels like I'm going to go across the country to not sell as many tickets. Like, why would I, you know, it's a big trip. Yeah. Yeah. But then that trip was like, I almost did better than there than like America. So wow. I was like, Oh, maybe Australia would be the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Like, the it was kind of similar. I, I still, London was like most tickets I've ever sold in my life. Really? It was like 2,000 people. Fuck, that's crazy. Was, I, yeah, very. It was like a su- surprise. I didn't realize. Like, yeah. I guess if you look at the analytics, like I do well there, but like I just. It's I just so weird. When like you, when, had you ever been there before? I've been there once when I yeah. was younger, yeah. It's so weird going to. Because I'm doing my first ever like UK tour, and yeah, I've, I'm selling crazy well in London. And I'm like, I've never been there. Yeah. People are buying tickets. It's I know. Such a it, weird thing. I have like backdated theories as to why, but mm. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, you know, it's so it's such a dense population. Like, they're all packed in together. So, like, yeah. the amount of people that are able to easily see you is, mm-hmm. like, is like mashed together and is a big enough. I also think they fall, for me, I think they follow Americans. And because I'm Canadian, I have, like, a British sense of humor. Yes. So, I think yeah. there's a bit of that. Where you're, you're like, yeah, the outsider poking fun. I'm like, the Ameri- I'm like an American to them, but that, like, kind of my humor like is relates to their how their sense of humor is yes yeah yeah i think i think yeah any any like immigrant making fun of where they live is it's very relatable to anyone who doesn't live there obviously (laughs) yeah that's true too yeah you know pointing it out so um i love your your man on the street stuff that you do in new york just going around doing vox pops and messing with people is that a lot is that uh, a lot easier in a place like America because there's more boisterous personalities. Because I noticed that when I when I went there and did man on the street stuff of like, oh, people are so much more willing to actually talk and say anything to me. I mean, it depends on where you are and what the vibe is of that moment, I think. Because mm. it's like, there's certain places and times when people have a lot to say. Like, you want people to have a lot to say. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I guess that's why there's kind of different men on the street. There's men on the street where you're like, there's in like more satirical and you have like a joke and that's kind of like more the British Canadian. I think American people that do men on the streets more like there's not a second level to it. You know mm. what I mean? It was kind of like almost like fun lifestyle content. Yeah. It's like, a, it's not, I wouldn't describe it as like comedy as much. It's like they're almost uh, fun lifestyle content yeah, like where the person being interviewed is like right. So I think the, why the, the big, jug. so if you think about it, the biggest like American man on the street comedy things are all just like, they get drunk people mm-hmm. and they go to spring break or whatever. Yes. But yeah. I think that a lot of times there, there's times in like culture where everyone has like a lot of thought to say. Yeah. And then also there's times, um, like if you go to, for example, like, uh, Let's say you go outside of a Star Trek convention, like mm-hmm. all the people have a lot to say because they're yes. there for this thing. And yeah. It seems normal. But I think just actual like on the street stuff right now, I think is probably less of that in my opinion because one, uh, all of this stuff's been said. Mm-hmm. So I feel like for 
three or four years ago, there was a lot of people that had like, I have a lot of opinions I like want to tell people. Yes. And I think now it's kind of like all this stuff's been said. Yeah. Which is, once it's been said, most people kind of move on in their mm -hmm. normal lives. But it's like people have a lot to say when they feel like, um, like not enough people know this thing that I know. Mm. And now it's like, you know what I mean? That was the first yeah. part. And I think also TikTok ruined it a bit because yeah. people are very conscious of the fact that like... What do you do for work? And people know what happens when you become famous against your will. Right. And it's really good. Like not or bad. Has to be like people know, people know that like a million people might see this, right? Like, yeah. dude, I used to... Like the old, you know, the, the people that like did this stuff, like a lot of times you'd be like, oh, we're like a you know, small local interview or we're a, you That's, know, a college in, thing. When I went there in 2019, right. I said we were doing a travel show for Australian TV. Right. So you're t kind of talking about all these like small things where people are yeah. just like worst case scenario, it just ends up somewhere where it's like, I think people are conscious of like, no, it is possible that like this thing, millions of people see it, mm. which makes them more like on guard. Interesting. Yeah. That's so yeah, if you're just trying to get like crazy people being crazy, I think it's a good place for that. But like that's not my, I, you tr that's not like my favorite thing to do. No, you want to you want to have back and forth. With, that's what I love about your stuff. Is but like, yeah, well, like you opinionated have people, people, people that like you walk into like you know kind of traps or whatever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think. I think it's uh, not the best time for man on the street, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah. That's, but there's certain places, so that's why I like going to like big events where there's lots going on, because I feel like the ruckus removes that and people are a little more hyped up. Yeah, so like a hyped right. level. People, like, pe people will go to the Republican convention to have those opinions loudly. Yes. You know? And yeah, or whatever, exactly. So I think there's, but there's also like a vibe of like, there's all the media there. It's like, there's just like a, there's certain areas where it's like, it just feels more normal now to like start yes. talking the way that like dancing's insane. But if everyone's dancing at a club, like it feels normal yes. and you might be like, did I dance last night? Like it's crazy. Yeah. So I think that, that there's certain places that it feels more normal, but just like overall in general, mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit uh, worse because of TikTok for that specific genre, but it goes through waves. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What do you, what do you think is like, a lot of times I'll look at like, cause I have like, you know, whatever, three or four things that I do, like stand up, uh, like street stuff, sketches, um, and then kind of like satire news articles in the podcast. There's sort of like, there's kind of like four or five things I do. And I kind of feel like the moment often changes where it like suits one more than the other. Mm. Yeah. Cause I've always done like so many different things and yeah, it's that whole thing we're having like, fuck, do I pick one or do I just do all of them or it's, yeah, it really is more like rotate yeah. through things as, you know, the it feels to me like, like satire is what's necessary when there's like something that there, there's kind of like a vibe of like everyone knows something, but you're like not really supposed to say it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yes. kind of, and people are afraid to say it. And then it usually eventually that gets like broken down and now everyone's saying all of the things a lot. And I yeah. think that's where we are right now mm. where it's like, there's not really a need for like finding an interesting, subtle way to say the thing that you can't say. Because yeah. right now, there's no things that aren't being said. Yeah, like it's it's hard like to... Like something, like an event happens and all of the opinions are said within once. two days. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, and like you couldn't invent a character funnier than some of the people who are earnestly that person. <laughs> yeah. It's, and, that, and that person's like a politician yeah. with, with a lot of power, you know? It is, yeah, I guess it's hard to, it would have been, it's a lot, it would have, it's a so lot just easier changes, to it? satirize politicians and, and celebrities or whatever when no one was intentionally talking in slogans and almost making themselves a caricature yeah. with social media. Yeah, exactly. They were, um, it, it, it's almost like there's like more of elephants in the room. Mm, Do you yeah. know what I mean? And then once the elephants in the room are gone, like I feel like satire is like the best way to sort of like point them out. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, and just in real life, if, if there's an elephant in the room, like, you know, comedy is a good way to sort of like talk about that. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Like someone gets divorced. Like, let's say your body, like his wife cheated on him. Like, yes. and it's all tense. Like yes. you could be tense or you could be like, make jokes about it. And yes. probably the best way to do it for like, and that's years. how you bring it in the open. Yeah. Have a bit of a laugh. And, and I think that, a, that yeah. sometimes the world needs that. Yes. And then yes. sometimes it's like all this stuff's being said. And probably in that case, stand up's a better, more direct art form. 
Mm. So I think stand up's the best when it's like that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah. Like when I was watching anyone talk, about less that, layered art forms are probably more. Po- I think less layered art forms are more popular when people have all the information. Yeah, like for like, I'm just thinking like the most recent huge thing is like Trump getting shot. Like I much preferred watching comedians talk about it than than anyone else. Whereas sometimes, look, because you kind of know what the people are all gonna say now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like most people, you're like a big event happens, and you're like, I can tell you what that guy's gonna say before he says it. I can tell you what that guy's gonna say before he says it. Like it's so yes, you know what I mean. It's already like it's so set. Yeah, you could you could guess what every what every popular commentator is gonna say. You know what their take's gonna be for the most part. Yeah. Whereas like yeah, comedians are usually which is more why they likely. get cancelled a lot because every now and then they won't say what you know they're going to say. What they're and then their own audience turns on them. It's happens <laughs> left-wing people, right-wing yeah. people. It's like, hey, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to be with us. Hey, we think these 10 things. And yeah. yeah, and then their whole fan base turns into, like, single-issue fans. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, there's, I mean, that's probably happened in a crazy amount with, like, Israel-Palestine stuff where, like, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm You develop, like, a whole fan base talking about that, and then you're just like, oh, by the way, I don't, like, agree with you on all the other stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> I think, but that's with like co- like comedians probably, and not just comedians, but probably other things. Like you're kind of because the no- the same as like an athlete, right? Mm. Like the thing that they're, or maybe even you know like a lifestyle design person, like or a workout guy. They're like the primary thing that they're you like them for isn't their uh, takes on like there isn't their you know, fighting your fight for you, right? Yes. So then if they don't, it's, like, not as big a deal. Mm. Where when a guy, he's, like, you, the whole reason we're... Sub- there are certain, certain people where you're, like, well, the only reason we like you at all is because you're, like, the guy fighting our thing for us. Yes. So you're almost, like, a sacrifice for us. Yeah. And yeah. You, then you can get, you know, make money doing it and have a successful career. But, like, really, you're kind of, like, a mouthpiece for a certain group of people, which is, like, politicians, yeah, right? So then if you stop doing it, but you don't... So it kind of makes sense because you're like, well, what else are they then, mm. right? Because if you're like, oh, well, they have one thing that went against you and you don't like them, you're like, well, it kind of makes sense because you're like, that is the only thing that you offer them yeah. is you'll say their things for the megaphone. Yeah. So it's like if you don't have anything else that you're offering, then that actually does make sense that you yeah. stop. The, okay, well, I'll just find a new guy that to say it that does agree with what I think. Yeah, it's like the burger shop stop <laughs> selling burgers. Yeah, I'll, just go to, I'll go to the other one that does sell burgers, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it kind of does make sense. But yeah. with other people, you're like, well, I think uh, a lot of, especially like comedians, you're like, I actually, you actually, uh, there's like, you know, all those psychological things where you, like the same with your buddies, like you actually kind of prefer sometimes like people that have a few different opinions than you because you like the pushback makes it them more interesting. Yeah, yeah. But you're not looking at pundits for pushback. You're looking at pundits to evangelize. Yeah, that's why like I I always really try to make fun of like everyone, even stuff that I agree with. It's important because otherwise some comedians, you see them lock themselves into a fan base that – won't let them tell one kind of joke or several kinds of jokes. Well, that's me. Yeah. You it's like this, you're trying to, you basically end up having people that like the reason they like you is because of your evangelizing for them. Yeah. Yeah. And And it's like, like, you have to like constantly push back against. Oh, fuck it. I was just going to say, you see this, like people try to put you in this box. Like if I make fun of, I do a sketch making fun of like, I made fun of Jack Black and that. And then now I'm like a lefty comedian, according to some people. But then I'll. What did you them. say about Jeff, Jack Black? Oh, I just I just like did a sketch of like Jack Black screaming at the other guy. What what the? Oh, fuck I said a Jack Black for? sketch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like making fun. That of That wasn't him. even really. No, no, but because your take was put like you in a box. That's weird because like yeah. your take on that was basically Jack Black was probably pissed off. Yes, but it's like that's just like objectively probably true. Yeah, yeah. Your thing was more like that the human element of it. Mm. Yeah. Of like, of of course the guy who's playing Bowser would be upset at his Yeah. Friend. Obviously Jack Black is probably <laughs> like, buddy, like, <laughs> of course. Yeah. It's, it is. Yeah. That's like, not even like the fucking spiciest take. No, no. Period. But people will try and put you in a box if you make fun of. Why is that lefty? People were saying that, because he should have been like uh, it actually was bad that he said that. Yeah, yeah. Like no, it was it was bad that he said that. Or other people being like, no, he should have stood by. His Dude, friend. that was the craziest thing because like you're like get, uh, a million people that like 
their whole identity was like hating Trump. And then they're like, oh, I wish the bullet didn't miss. And you're like, is that surprised that they think that? You, like, that's surprised to you that like a bunch yeah. of like Hollywood people like wanted Trump dead? Yeah, of like, course. Or like, yeah, I saw, I, I saw like a bunch of fucking people who are not citizens saying that shit. I'm like, you'll get fucking deported saying that. You, you know, well, it's you can't like, say that. <laughs> I understand, like, the shakedown, and he cancels his own thing, and a big part of it is, like, yeah. you know, he, Jack Black probably just, he's, like, uh, if but there is some part of it, you're like, if you did believe what you say, you probably shouldn't have apologized, mm. but I guess, you know, they have to have, like, a veneer that I'm, like, a, a statesman, sort of. Yeah, it just, it just would have been. I don't know, if someone's like, yeah, hey, I wish this politician died, and then they're like, uh, you know, apologize. You're kind of like, okay, I do though. So I don't know. Yeah. Like you're allowed to, like you're allowed to wish someone dies. Mm. Yeah, you can, <laughs> but you can't. But you maybe don't get to keep the children's movie job. I guess is uh, well, exactly. But yeah. that at that point, that's what I'm saying. At that point, that is just like a PR nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Like that's they just would have. He. That's why they apologized so that Jack Black could keep all of his jobs. Like I remember, I just saw Deadpool. And watching the previews, Jack Black was in two movies, and then I saw an article before the movie about the new, like, Super Mario movie, and I'm like, oh my god, that's those are the jobs that Jack Black's apologizing over. Sure, yeah. Yeah. And he was doing some corny shit before that, too, so I feel like he was already in the job block, where it's like, yeah. do you see when he did, like, the whole uh, vote Biden? Like, dude, he did, uh, I can't remember what it was, but I he saw was wearing he was some costume. The and, like, Democrat yeah, thing. He was wearing some costume you were, like, performing for how good oh, Biden is. So doing, like, a song about how good Biden was or whatever. You see, this is <laughs> why you need like, compulsory <laughs> voting, because <laughs> if it was a chore, no one would be excited to see Jack Black <laughs> perform, you know? They'd get in Jack Black, maybe this will get people out, you yeah. know? Yeah, I mean, today's just D's sick. It's yeah. like, do, yeah, they don't like Trump, I don't know, that shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah, I know. It was, it was like, a lot over nothing, as, as, especially, like, so many of those same people, like, calling for his head is, are, are like, the free speech, say anything type. And it's a common, especially because it was at a comedy show as well. Yeah, you kind of realize after a while that you're like, everyone's lying, no one cares about free speech. Yeah, like, I, I'm looking at it, and especially, like, now. Like, I wonder if, there are if, if he waited five that. days to not to apologize. Do you reckon people, do you reckon it would have mattered if he didn't Well, say I think anything? people have this attitude of, like, if 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 this was the other way around, every like you know okay, so they they have an attitude of like, dude, can you imagine like an actor said, I hope Biden dies or like yeah. I hope Obama dies. Like, can you imagine like an actor mm. or a thing said like I hope someone shoots Obama? Yeah. they'd be like, you guys would fucking put that like make that guy's life the biggest living hell of all time. Yes. So they have the attitude of like, well, we're just doing what you do, which is a lot of Republican stuff. Eventually, especially like older Republican, is very like we'll do what you're doing and switch it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're like, well, yeah, that's what happens. And then it always goes on forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a giant loop. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, they're, to... they're right, but it's like, uh, and you, and you're kind of like, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Like mm. a bunch of like people, like people that are librarians will get mad about stuff. But it's like, when you see someone that you're like, cool, you're like, yeah, but you don't have to care. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're like, but you saw care? Some fucking lady, like a comedian, worked, you care? Yeah, some lady who worked a fucking cash <laughs> register tweeted out, "Oh, too bad they missed." And then some fucking lunatic showed up at her work with a phone, going, like, "Did you tweet this?" And she's like making six dollars an hour minimum wage. She looks fifty, and it's like Got her. her life sucks already, dude. She'll you know, twice. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to get her fired, also. But he's like, "Is this? Do you approve?" It? And then she got fired, and it's like. Does that win any battles for anyone? That didn't create a the only photo. The only argument that maybe I would ever see is like there's some and maybe there's some degree of like uh, if if like everyone's doing it now, yeah. then everyone agrees like, okay, and we all don't like this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where it was kind of like celebrity like there is maybe some degree of like celebrities that were like super political. Now there's kind of like ramifications no matter which way you go. Yes. So now they're all just shutting the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> or at least <laughs> that's some positive. It's like, yeah. Like how many artists were just like their whole deal? Because there was no ramifications of just like whatever, right? And now they're just like, I'm pissing off someone no matter who yes. I do. And the only reason I'm doing this is to like make more money and, you know, get fans and have people think I'm good. Mm. And if that's not working, then maybe I'll just shut up. Yeah. So, and then. There's probably that's happening a bit. Yes, yeah. And I think 
I don't know. I think um, everyone sort of agrees it's lame to yeah, like which I trying to get someone fired bit. for their job. Yeah, I saw a little bit with the Mr. Beast stuff. We'll, we'll but it won't stop there. The problem is it doesn't stop there. No. It'll, it'll, it, there's always going to be uh, value in being puritanical. It's yeah. always going to be. Yeah, although I saw one thing that gave me hope during all the Mr. Beast stuff when his mate was getting cancelled for like flirting with minors. People pulling out old clips of Mr. Beast like saying edgy shit and like I think he, he was telling jokes about like buying black people or something fucking lame. Mr. Beast? Yeah, yeah. This well, that's why he went to Africa ago. so he could rub it in. There, there he goes. He built built a few wells and, and left left with a few people in a shipping container. <laughs> <laughs> I always kind of thinking of it because like he always gets shit, uh, you know, being like, oh, this guy's being a white savior going to yeah. buy stuff or whatever. And to me, it feels like the obvious answer to that is like, the guy's, you know, going and dropping a million dollars and helping people. But then the other side of that is like, yeah, but also he is cucking them a bit. So I can understand why. It's just like, imagine you didn't have money and someone came and bought your girlfriend dinner. You'd just be like, you'll fuck off. I saw one, the more recent You are getting cucked. He bought a fucking neighborhood. (laughs) He's cucking the African government. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. He bought a whole fucking neighborhood. And I, I was just looking, and the house was really close together. And I was like, what if they fucking hate their neighbors? What if they fight? What if someone else go, sees like the video with like a hundred million views, some poor cunt living in Africa? Sure. And goes, that's bullshit. I'm going to take that. And there's no police and no security. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like he just made a lot of like impoverished people a huge target also. Great that he got him a house. Sure, yeah. But I feel like he was just like, here then it he's is. He's on to the next one. You can take it. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, it's if, if you're the guy that got the free house, it's cool. Like it's it's. I don't know how much it helps or doesn't help, but like yeah. it's it's probably like neutral. I just you know what I mean. Like gun as well. But I can also understand if I was like in the like maybe if I was like uh, some people, you'd be like, you're cucking me. Yeah, yeah, you're cucking <laughs> me, and then I, I'd be worried about like being emasculated, and then like my jealous neighbor who did who just didn't get the house. Oh, you for know? sure. Like there's a fucking refugee camp down there, and they go, oh, they got all fucking. You're, you're sort of saying that it's the equivalent of like there's like a family, and then someone dies and gives one son the inheritance. You made everyone hate each other. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. But but in there's this scenario, definitely that's no one's saying. related, so there's no loyalty at all. <laughs> no, there's definitely some like second and third order effects that. He's yeah. not about to talk about. It. He's just gone. He's on to the next thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we got to go to the show. Um, but uh, oh thanks. shit! We're yeah, we got. We're done meeting there right now. Okay. Um, oh, the TM's calling us. All right, thank you, Ryan. Uh, let's do the show. Check out Ryan Long. What are you doing at the moment? Boys Cast every Friday. Uh, YouTube.com slash the Boys Cast, and also every podcast platform. And uh, at Ryan Long Comedy on everything. Excellent. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out the merch before the pre-orders close. These are only available for a couple of weeks and then they'll be gone for good. This is your chance. This is the best merch we've ever made and the first ever Spearheads on these merch drop. I want to see you wearing it at the shows. All right. Thanks so much. Loosebeers.com. Have a shit one. Bye.